Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged, and changed. I am super excited. Um, today we have a guest that we have not had on the show in a long time. Wherever you are, put your hands together for our girl D Williams. Woo! Hey y'all. D, welcome back to the show. It's been a minute since you've been here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be back, and I'm excited to talk to y'all, have a yes. chat with my sister about this thing. It's always good. I told I told um, D um, earlier today, every time we get on the phone, it's a whole moment. It's a whole podcast episode. So I'm like, girl, yes. let's just get you on the show. <laughs> um <laughs> Since you are here, Dean, I'm so happy that you are. You are our black feature for this week. Y'all, Dee is an author, creator, Ooh. extraordinaire, okay? Thank she you. has released a book called Scribes Over Signs. And today, we are going to be discussing this phenomenal book for this episode. And I'm super excited. So, Dee, without giving too much of the book because we're going to talk about it tell the folks what this book is about this book well first it's it's written so that it's interactive um so there's lots of journal prompts in there if you get the online version when the print versions come out y'all will know and you will actually be able to write in it as though it's a journal for yourself so you can go and reflect and things like that Um, but it's really to take you through a journey of what is witchcraft? What are the open doors um, of witchcraft in my life? And how can I reconcile these areas of my life with the Lord? Yeah. Y'all, I can't wait until we get into this. D has a powerful testimony. And um, I believe that this episode is going to help somebody get out of things that they have been attached to. Mm. destroy yokes and bondages in Jesus name Mm. generational curses are going to Mm -hmm. stop with somebody that listens to this episode and I declare I declare and decree it in the mighty name of Jesus and it is done amen Amen. so we are going to hop into this thing because as you can tell I'm excited (laughs) I'm super excited so um D when you talk about what witchcraft is, like a lot of people understand or think of witchcraft as far as like witches, like the person on a broom or with the hat and green face and like with cloaks and has like this potion thing. Cauldron, and green. I don't even know what to call it. Slime yeah. in a pot. <laughs> right. And there are, you know, witches that do operate in that way. But Mm -hmm. witchcraft is very sneaky. It's very cunning. And it's something, once we start to unpack and unfold what -hmm. it really is, like, some of y'all going to be like, oh, shoot, I do that. Oh, man, Uh I actually have those things in my bedroom. I actually participate in this stuff. So, so D, please tell us and define what witchcraft is. So witchcraft essentially is, is like any form of worship that does not have God at the center of it. Now, people always think, oh, worship is just like you're singing music and da-da-da-da-da. And so maybe you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not over here praising, you know, I don't know, the stars or what have you. So I'm not engaging in witchcraft. But anything really that you're focusing um, your life upon, if you are grounding yourself in it, if you are identifying yourself with anything that is not drawn from the Lord, you're actually worshiping something else, making it an idol. Um, Therefore, it's witchcraft. Yeah. Absolutely. And what does that look like? Um, I know in in your book it talks about, and y'all go get this book as we talk. Y'all go ahead and, and where can we find the book again? Is it on Amazon? Um, the book is actually on my own website. Okay, drop um, it, girl, it, drop it. Yes, the link will definitely be in the description. Um, it's scotianhospitality.com. It is my lovely website. I'm really excited about that. That's a whole other topic in itself, but you can find it on there. That's S-C-O-T-I-A-N, hospitality.com. There's a little tab called ebooks, and you'll see it there for Kindle, 
Kobo, Wattpad, PDF version. And I think there's another one on there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So y'all, I, w- I want you to, um, to D really like, tell us what are these things that some people may be participating in? They may have some sort of materials and not think that it's mm-hmm. pertaining or related to witchcraft. So first thing I'm going to bring up is identity. Um, and I say this because that is one of the most common gateways that we are seeing right now. Um, and when I say identity, I'm going to come for everyone's Zodiac sign. It is what it is. Um, every time there's like a certain season coming around, oh, it's Taurus season, it's Leo season, this, that, and the other thing. There's a lot of pride that people have around, um, who they believe they are based on what this Zodiac sign is. And all of that is grounded in. Um, you know, the moon and the stars and what time you were born and this, that, and the other thing. And when you dive into all that, like I did way back when, Mm -hmm. um, because your identity is not grounded in Christ, you think that, like, how could they know my personality this way? Excuse me. And so um, there's things about you um, that you see. Even they'll say, like, your positive traits and the toxic traits and all these sorts of things. So you really feel like, you know, oh, like there's literally some sort of supernatural alignment that is connected to the Zodiac sign that's relevant to me. And I say supernatural because there is a spiritual realm and and there are things that are of the Lord and not of the Lord that are in the spiritual realm because we know that the adversary, <laughs> Satan also operates in the supernatural. That's why you have sleep paralysis. This is why people talk about they see demons and this is why people say that they have demons. Cause there, there's a spiritual awareness that we have, which is all yeah. supernatural stuff, right? Um, but because these zodiac signs draw you to creation and not the creator, you become subject to worshiping an idol, a created thing, a graven image, as mm-hmm. they would say, like in in the Ten Commandments, is that the other thing, right? So. Um, anytime you are grounding yourself based on the admiration and the dedication to a created thing, then you're falling into witchcraft. So identity is a huge way that people are open up to that. Mm -hmm. And and it seems really harmless in that context, um, at first, but for people who are, who are really lost and are really trying to figure out who they are, why they're dealing with certain things and they either are mad at God and so they're not going to go to him in prayer or they don't know how to pray or they don't know that they can actually even go to God about that thing, whether it's because they weren't raised around church folk or they had church hurt or whatever it was, they're going to look for answers. They're going to look for answers. And so it's laid out there for you as bait for identity. Okay. (laughs) Um, Let's go there. (laughs) <laughs> let's go there and I was I was gonna ask you before you got into it <laughs> like sorry. what do you think that people are drawn to this new age doctrine and I when it when it come I really feel like there are many things but the few things that I recognize is people that are mishandled in church mm-hmm. and I'm not blaming the church at large but right. just like like individual situations like Ooh. spirits are real yeah for those who have seen demons and have seen angels and you seeing stuff you're not crazy nope. but because a lot of people are ignorant of the spirit of the of these spiritual gifts or 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 what's going on in the spiritual realm don't mm-hmm. know how to address it yeah. a lot of the times it gets dismissed Mm -hmm. And so if someone says, I'm going to sister so-and-so because I don't, I'm I'm dealing with, you know, I'm seeing stuff. Mm -hmm. And sister so-and-so, she don't know, she don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. She can't give you no help. Mm -hmm. It's, it's sad for an individual to be turned away. Yeah. And so... You find we find ourselves going to other sources. 
Right. Such as witchcraft. But I want to remind somebody and encourage someone just because someone that you thought was a Christian or that is a Christian maybe, but may not be as far along in their walk that right. couldn't help you for this particular situation does not mean there are not Christians out there that cannot right. talk this out with you. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And we can't be so quick to, to be disappointed in the church at the same time because we are flawed people. Right. That is just what it is. Um, and another thing is like, I noticed this mass movement of new age doctrine amongst hmm. who, and I'm going to say it amongst black women. Yep. Call it for what it is. I've noticed a lot of it amongst black women and uh, mm-hmm. amongst black people because Christianity has been used to to demonize black people, but mm-hmm. not the pureness and not the truth of what Christ represents, but a manipulated version mm-hmm. of what, you know, slave owners or people yeah. that abuse power, even still today. Mm-hmm. People ain't ain't right with God, ain't walking with God, but want to use Christ's name and ain't ain't spoke to him. Okay. You can't represent Christ and you can't speak on behalf of God if you don't talk to him, if you don't live for him, Ooh. if you don't serve him. Have and I'm story. talking and I'm talking about I'm talking to all those people mm-hmm. that wear Christian on their back. Yeah. But you are not living according to God's word. Mm-hmm. And so there has been this demonization of Christianity and so there has been a rejection of Christ. Yeah. And so we have been turning to new age. We have been turning to idolatry and witchcraft from even our, Mm -hmm. our, our, um, our cultures. I remember, um, a young man was, was doing, I was, I was in, I was in college and there was a center that we were all a part of. It was kind of like a collective place that you can come and study and stuff. And he's doing like, witchcraft <laughs> the whole sage he got the the stones and all that stuff and he was like kendra come and participate and i'm like nah i'm not into that that's the <laughs> devil <laughs> and he says to me you see that's what the white man wants you to think that this is the devil this is our you know this is comes from our culture this comes from our you know our people but i need you to understand this yeah when god makes you new hmm when God makes you new. Ooh, that part. All that cultural stuff. I'm not just saying dismiss who you are ethnically. I'm no. not saying not celebrate your nationality. I'm saying there are some things in everybody's culture that yeah. is not pleasing to God. And when he calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light, we have to forsake these things. We have to forsake them. We sure do. And and that's the thing, right? It's we like it, like I said, going back to identity, we're basing our identity off of things that, that we can see, things that our mind can at least somewhat comprehend. Right? And so if it's our culture, how we grew up, the things that we say, the way that we dress, yeah. you know, what media is feeding us, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to ground our identity in these things, but all of these things are going to pass away at some point. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, the one person, the one thing that's alpha and omega beginning and the end, if he has an identity for you, then that's the only thing that can't be broken. Yeah. That's that's the only way you can identify yourself and it not be shattered by something that happens in the earth. You can, you can be, you know, having 25 cents in your bank account and on your last pack of ramen noodles, you still say, I'm a lender, not a borrower. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <sighs> this ain't even, this is about to be a sermon. Anywho, 
<laughs> identity is a huge gateway yes. um, into that. In terms of material things that you have, we, we already mentioned sage, crystals, crystal jewelry. I know it looks pretty on your necklace, but that thing is attracting stuff that you don't even know. You don't even know about. Mm. I mean, I remember when I didn't have any crystals until I went to a medium for the first time. And at the end of my reading, uh, there was this, she was like, oh, there's like this stack of cards and they all had numbers on them and whatever else. And I had to pick one and whatever um, number on it was, um, it was, what's the word, contingent? Anywho, there's Mm -hmm. a book that the cards come with and whatever number you draw is connected to, it was the angel number cards. Now that I think about it, it was the angel number. And so whatever the angel number was on the card, you went to that angel number in this book. And then it there's like a whole reading about what this angel does, what it means. And there's a crystal that is connected to the angel slash angel number. Let me pause for a second because people are going to say, well, God has angels too. Well, just for those who don't know, there are angels who fell with Satan too. Now I can come back. Um, and so whatever crystal was written down according to that angel that was what she gave me can and you pause be- right there because mm-hmm. we need to take a beat on that on just that <laughs> there were angels that was rolling with satan mm-hmm. that was on satan's bandwagon when he got kicked out of heaven mm-hmm. that fell mm-hmm. from grace from heaven yep The way that witchcraft is presented, it's presented angelic. It's presented beautiful. It's presented like. The enemy comes as an angel of light. And if we like, don't know the word. We're going to follow the wrong, the wrong light. Yeah. Kids, adults, just people in general are looking for answers. Yeah. And we as believers have to be there to catch them and we have to be there to pray for them. And I thank God for testimonies like yours, D there is so much you can help somebody with because you've been through it. Mm -hmm. I've never had an experience with manifestation or terror or none of that stuff. Not saying that I can't pray you through, but there's something about your experience yeah that knows what it feels like to yearn for for just gratification in in the wrong way but it feeling good to you Mm -hmm. and for whoever that young girl or young boy was my prayer for them and i still pray over this person that left this book that they found Jesus that day and Mm -hmm. said, you know what? I don't need this. Mm. You know? So what do you say to um, people that are living in this way that are still curious about who Jesus is? To those people, I would say to follow that curiosity about Christ at the end of the day is curiosity that got you there with new age. That's what got me with, with new age. I was, I was curious. Yes, I was desperate to find something and I wanted closure and there were all these things. And, you know, I, I felt abandoned by God at one point. I thought that he was angry with me. I had shame and condemnation, but at the end of the day, I, I was curious, like I need something that's real. Like what's real out here. And you know, I thought that the only thing that was real was what I could feel with my hands, what I could see with my eyes. And Jesus came into my life and gave me an experience that I couldn't even comprehend. And I was like, oh, this is the real thing. And this is months after, you know, calling out to God and being like, listen, big G, 
if you're even really up there. <laughs> Cause I, I was fed up. I, I remember saying to God, you know, I've tried everything else, mm-hmm. but I'll try you one more time. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. I remember sitting there in the couch on the couch of an Airbnb, like December of 2019 and saying that to God. And, um, over the course of nine months, wrestling with this thing yeah. with the whole tarot thing and mm-hmm. whole Jesus thing. And yeah. it was all kind of, there was all these blurred lines. Mm-hmm. Um, Christ came in because I allowed myself to become curious about him yeah. also. And in that search of, of him, I also found who we always knew me to be. And I'm still finding that out, but you know, knowing that, I am God's and he really came and snatched me up out of that thing. Glory to God. I would say to anyone who is um dibbling and dabbling as people like to say, mm-hmm. um, that curiosity when it comes to God and, and about Jesus, pursue that curiosity. Um I remember when I first got saved and um uh, I was like I was gonna watch the sermon, but it was like really long. <laughs> And I was like, dang, Lord, this is some long message. I don't know. I'm going to have to do this in parts. And I was convicted because I used to sit there and, like, study New Age stuff for hours. Indeed. The Holy Spirit was like, Indeed. you can <laughs> do that, you, you can, can listen, listen to, to this sermon. Holy Ghost message, period. You can research something about the Bible that you don't understand, you know? So yeah. there's no excuse. It's just that you're dealing with the reality of your flesh and your spirit not agreeing and you have to choose. I I think I remember um, in the first episode I was on, I was talking about choosing Christ over your carnality. And um, it's that, it's that battle. You you come to face that thing and there will be times where you might want to um, say something just, to not feel separate from a conversation, you know, um, working in the entertainment industry. I meet all sorts of people from different places all the time. And I've had many people be like, Oh, what's your Zodiac sign? And I just tell them, I don't identify myself by my Zodiac sign. And then they ask me what my birthday is. And I tell them, I'd rather not share my birthday with you because I know what they're going to do. Yeah. Right. And, And so you know I what I do? Face with that thing. What you got to do? When people ask me that, they don't ask me often, but when it does come up, they be like, what's your sign? I, I be like, the cross. Oh. Hello. Period. The cross. Okay. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a no. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll give you the cross, child. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, like, you're going to come face to face with that, and you have to, you have to choose yeah. Every single time it's a choice. Like when you choose Jesus, yes, you've made the ultimate choice. But every single day you're you are faced with the opportunity to choose him over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And so that's what I would say is to just let that curiosity drive you towards Jesus. Um you will get more than you were looking for. Ooh. For sure. And speaking um, of more yeah. That's just that you being in relationship with the God of the universe. Once yeah. you stop worshiping the universe and come into relationship with the God that created the universe that created you knows the ins and outs of you knows you better than you know yourself can count mm-hmm. and name the hairs on your head. Girl, I'm a... sorry. That was kind of <laughs> unprofessional, but girl, um, <laughs> I was at a conference not too long ago and God was just so there in an overwhelming way. Wow. And I thought to myself like, God, you really, you really blowing up in here. Like Lord. Uh. <laughs> but then I thought to myself, like we put limits on God. We do. God can only move between this time and this time. He can only do this and that. But the thing about it is God wants to, to speak to us every day. Every day. All those the time. spiritual gifts, he wants us to operate in those every day. All the Praying, time. him speaking to us. 
-hmm. miracle signs and wonders he wants to do that every day every single day but my question to us is have we surrendered enough or Mm -hmm. surrendered at all so he can truly have his way yeah my my challenge and my call to everyone that is listening to this message just like our, our, our dear sister D said, give God that shot. Mm-hmm. And don't give it to him and you giving the restrictions and you calling the shots. Right. Fully surrender. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about take it, dump it out, throw it away, delete whatever it is that's causing you to be hindered, cut it and say, yes, Lord. Until it gets deep down in you. Yes, yeah. Lord. Um, D, I want you to. Oh, this is so good. Um, but as we come to a close, do you mind saying a prayer? I don't for those folks that are listening to this right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and before I pray, I just want to thank you for being obedient um, to the Holy Spirit. And I say this because this book came from our first episode that we did together. Um, I remember, like, I was like, Lord, I got to get prepared for this episode. I was all nervous to share my testimony because I was all scared of what people would think. And, oh, this girl was dabbling in witchcraft and now she loved Jesus. I don't know about that, girl. And I was getting all these notes prepared. um, And we hardly touched any of it in the episode. It was so spirit-led. And I had all these notes and I was like, dang, but I just kept it on my computer. Um, and fast forward to October of last year, um, when I wrote this, um, I got in COVID and I was in my room in quarantine. I should say I was, I was in the mix. They wanted me to be in quarantine and then test me again and see if I had it, but it ended up being positive anyway. But that's all right, because we survived. We bless the Lord. Sure did. And um, I was like, Lord, I refuse to go crazy while I'm in this quarantine. So what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to write a book. And I said, "Mm, I don't know, Lord. (laughs) I know I I I got all this time on my hands, but I'm sure I could do something else. He's like, no, I want you to write a book. And um, I said, what do you want? it to be about like where do I start and he said you have the outline already and I I looked through come on I'm like, God. Where I got this at? and I found the notes from our podcast episode and the way it was laid out it, literally the book was broken up based on those notes from months prior so thank maybe you even over a that. year prior yeah something like that a long time ago yeah so, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you because I never told you that. But yeah, this is a this is a product of you giving me the opportunity to, to share my testimony this way and using your platform. Um, that outline was there, and it was just waiting to to come to life. And um, yeah, so thank you for that. All glory to God. Amen. All glory to God. Mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna pray uh for those who are who are tussling with this thing who are struggling with it um those who who are believers but have opened themselves up um to witchcraft and maybe they don't know um but i definitely feel called to the lost believer and and i believe this this book is is really for anyone but specifically you know those who grew up knowing the Lord and there was brokenness that never got addressed and you turned to another way. Um, this was definitely written with you in mind because I was just like you one time. Yeah. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much um, for your mercies that are new every morning, that even if we walk away from your covering, you still continue to show us your mercy. God, I thank you for those who are listening to this podcast. I pray, Lord God, that they heard something and they knew that it was you speaking to them, not me, not Kendra. God, I ask that your Holy Spirit would awaken your children, that they would come to realize that we are in some really serious times. 
um, and that you you want your kids. You are you are leaving the ninety nine for all of them. And so, God, I thank you that you use this podcast as a platform and an opportunity to reach your hand out towards them in hopes that they would reach right back out for you. Um, I pray, Lord God, that people would have their eyes open, their ears open, and their hearts softened towards you, that you would give them the opportunity to to choose you and to back away um, from the deception and, and the the taste of witchcraft that is definitely seeking after them in this earth. Yes, Lord. We come against the spirit of deception in the name of Jesus. I come against any grief, any any feelings of brokenness, any thoughts of condemnation that are making your children fearful to come to you mm-hmm. and be honest about where they are spiritually. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they would know that none of them are orphaned, that they have not been abandoned by you, that you truly have never left them, nor have you forsaken them. I pray that a wave of repentance would come over um, the listener um, who needs to just turn back to you in any way, shape, or form. Um, Maybe it's they've gotten caught up in religion and they just stopped really caring um, about really being in relationship with you, or maybe that they've lost their way or they're somewhere in between. I just pray that they would surrender to you and know that they can surrender their life to you once again and you will still take them you will take them back and you'll run and meet them halfway as soon as you see them coming down the road so i pray for every prodigal i thank you that you chose me um and that you've given me the courage and the boldness to not only share this testimony but to write this book um thank you for your holy spirit that gave me the ability to be creative to have the words um, to write down, Heavenly Father, for giving the complete and total vision for this book. And we pray for every life that it touches, that your name will be honored, that your name will be glorified in the earth, and that we will see a revival yes. in your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ooh, amen. Yes. Okay. That was good. So, y'all, thank you again for tuning in to this episode. I pray that this was a blessing to everyone and if you know somebody that needs to hear this message please share with them and Mm y'all go get the book okay (laughs) um it's good it's good like even if you aren't doing witchcraft it's it's good like it's good it's It's just good good to know yes it's a good heart check check. okay every now and then i go through like in the first chapter it talks about um points of entry and it's just talking about basically where the areas in your life where you're not being open with the Lord where the devil can creep in. And even that is just like so good. So good. To just be like, Hmm, you know what, Lord, let's have a chat. Let's have a heart to heart. Let's have a chat. You know, so. So y'all go get this book. Okay. And get your life. (laughs) Um, And and once again, thank you so much D for coming on with us. All right, y'all until next time. See ya. Bye.